Come on, come on. Here it is. Here it is. Welcome. Welcome to the H Town Happy Hour Podcast. Back again. This is Evan Lake with H Town Happy Hour. Derek Deal to Levy. Kayla Ribenbark, owner of Uptown Swim. Uptown Swim in the building. Man, you know what? I hopped in the pool yesterday for the first time, uh, basically this whole year. <laughs> yesterday was the first day. I got a good little workout in and then and then I just jumped right into the pool. So it's perfect that we have a, you know, and I was like, man, I I gotta get something new. I gotta get something Definitely. new. Definitely. Weather's hot, warming up. Yeah. Hot girl summer is upon us. Oh, it's and hot girl effect. summer. It's hot girl summer. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's go ahead and get this thing started. Go ahead and dive on in. Kayla, you wanna uh introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you. Uh yeah, so my name's Kayla Ruffin Park, uh owner of Uptown Swim. I launched my line about two years ago um really i love to travel i'm like always on a beach love to travel abroad how fitting yes yeah, so <laughs> bikini lines like right up up right up my alley always in a bikini so mm. definitely yeah okay so uh always on a beach always in a bikini is that at one point whenever you were you just said you know what i'm gonna start doing something with these swimsuits because i see all these other ones and yeah. yeah, and like every time I'm, um, you know, on vacation or whatever, I always get compliments on my swimsuit. So I'm like, look, I need to come out with my own line, my <laughs> own designs. So, yeah. Yeah. well, how old were you when you decided, like, made that decision, like, yo, I want to start my own boutique, I want to sell my own swimsuits? Well, honestly, like, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I kind of like never knew what I wanted to do. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I kind of always wanted to do a clothing line. And then just eventually I kind of fell into bikini and everything like that. But this is something I wanted to do for a really long time. And like, I didn't know what to do to get started and everything mm -hmm. like that. It's really scary. So I had to learn everything myself. Beautiful. So, yeah. That's the whole hurdle about uh, entrepreneurship that we appreciate so much. You know, it's kind of having that, oh crap, I, what am I going to be doing? What am I going to do? Yeah. Literally. And so, and so what were you, how are you able to do that? Or did you just like say, you know what? I'm gonna find somewhere where I can buy these and put these out somewhere. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so right now I'm, I'm working with vendors and things like that. So I kind of just pick what I think is, you know, what's hot right now. Um, what of girls that you know are traveling? Like, you know, what kind of bikinis are they wearing? And so I pretty much just pick all the pieces that I think are gonna be right. Um, also, I didn't think I mentioned earlier. Like, I'm in nursing school too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I kind of wanted to start it like as something on the side until I finish nursing school and I can really put, um, 100%. you know, 100% into it. But right now it's just like everything's going so well and taking off. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's a lot <laughs> doing sure. both. So how is it managing going to school? Because nursing school is not easy. Like that's tough. It's a lot of yeah. hours, a lot of dedicate, a lot of mind dedication, a lot, a lot of, a lot of work. So how, how kind of is it juggling that and running your own? Yeah, business? it's. It's really tough. I mean, I, so I've been taking classes for three years, and I just got accepted into the, you know, the actual nursing program where I'm getting into Way the meat of it. Congratulations, <laughs> girl. Yeah, but it is hard because it's like, oh, you know, oh, I have an exam this week, but also I have a photo shoot yeah. <laughs> that I need to get mm -hmm. to and, like, you know, things that I have to do, like events and things I have lined up. Yeah. So it's really just have, a lot of time photo, management. Yeah, you have a photo shoot and then you have a homework assignment due the next in the same day. Yeah, yeah. literally. <laughs> so it's just time management. You know, I try to, you know, dedicate certain days of the week to school and certain days of the week to my business. But you know, pretty much every day I'm either doing homework or working on my business or. Yeah. You know. So did you find out by, by trying to juggle, one day, focus more on the school and then kind of one day, on that because like I remember I, well, I was going to school for a while where it was. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays we were in class, and then uh, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays we were doing an internship where we left the campus and we went to go do something else to follow, you know, some some sort of career path. Yeah, definitely. I really I make sure I have all my assignments done before I try to like work on my business. I try to you know kind of school first. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Especially because I've been working on it for so long and it's definitely not something like I want to give up and I've made like a lot of progress into it and I'm like really you know you know far into it I'm almost done so I'm getting well, there you're also like about to enter the hardest part yes like the actual nursing school. that yeah exactly right now I'm still kind of in some intro nursing courses and they're you know they're imagine not super the, hard imagine <laughs> the, what yeah. imagine the prospects 
that you're going to be able to have <laughs> in nursing school talking about, oh, man, this is so stressful. Well, why don't y'all get y'all a new bikini? <laughs> hop in the pool. Take a swim off. Retail take a sunny break. break. Uptown swim. Yeah. yeah, they call that retail therapy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Study by the pool in your uptown swim bikini. Yeah. So what are some of the outlets that uh, you utilize to help you sell bikinis, get your brand awareness out there and everything? Yeah, so I'm on Facebook, um, Instagram. I have a website, uptownswim.com, on Instagram, uptownswim. Shameless swim. plug. <laughs> uh, it, girl. Facebook at uptownswim. <laughs> <laughs> get it, girl. All of it. So, yeah, I try to utilize all of them. Um, yeah, I really like Instagram, though, just because of, like, the layouts. You can really kind of catch the vibe, you know, because you can see everything at once. So you can kind of catch the vibe that I'm going for, which is super glam. And everything has rhinestones, a lot of pastels and neon colors. So yeah, love it. Nice, nice. That's yeah. super cool. But <laughs> And how much fun are you having with this? Because you're able to pick and choose what you like, put it on a back, put it on a store, and mm -hmm. market it out to these to, to these people. I mean, it's just like... I'm sure you're having a blast with learning how the business world works on that for one and also supplying a good product. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, it's always fun. Like every time I'm working, like I could be doing something, I'm always like doing something from my phone or even when I'm having a, cause I do everything myself, like a package and ship products and everything myself. And I really, like, I really enjoy it. It's something, it's fun. It doesn't feel like work. So, you know, they say yeah. find something you love to do That's and it's awesome. not work. Absolutely. That's really what it is for me. It's like, I really enjoy all of it so. plus you get to be your own boss exactly it's amazing we, uh, and you get to go to the beach <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and it's a business write off <laughs> exactly yeah. we sell t-shirts on hchampr.com and like so I, I totally feel your pain but it's like a it's a pain I enjoy it's like because there was times where I've sold like a couple hundred shirts in, in, in like a week or two and so I had to box package and ship out every single one one by one and i didn't have a label maker at the time so i yeah, was I just hand writing <laughs> these yeah it's yeah. not easy but yeah. i ain't gonna lie like i, I was would, about to say how much fun was that though you're, yeah, you're yeah. like man if this isn't in the mud i don't know what it is because <laughs> i would do it at the post office uh usps and even when i was in there like bringing box loads of t-shirts and stuff like they started to recognize me up there and even that feeling of them yeah. being like oh damn good week this week huh? Like, yeah. yeah yeah ship <laughs> ship all 800 no, that's no. dope <laughs> yeah so but yeah no we've talked about getting uh you know those those t-shirts around town i mean it's just it's huge i mean i i love repping houston yeah. as much as anyone as much as anyone hey. else, yeah it's, it's the h's out here it's h -town. H -town. H -town. Yeah, baby, you know what i'm saying <laughs> But yeah, no, our flag's planted here, and you know what I mean? Anything that has to do with Houston or the city or anything like that, it's like, man, I'm going to... Wrap it. Like, I was telling you, uh, well, one of the things I was thinking about was having, like, a little headband with the logo right up there. <laughs> would anyone wear that? <laughs> would, would anyone wear that? <laughs> Always. Man, yeah. So, tell, so you're from Houston, born and raised here, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I grew up in Galveston County, so... Oh, nice. What side of town? Uh, Texas City. Oh, well, nice. Texas City, Santa Fe, Dickinson. I've kind of lived yeah. like everywhere. We're yeah. originally yeah. from like the Clear Lake kind of. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like Webster I area. Still, I still oh. live in Seabrook too. Oh, really? Yeah. Definitely. I haven't lived down there in so long. I've always kind of just stayed in the city. <laughs> when yeah. I came here, I like never went back. So it's a hard juggle for me. Because as much as I like being in the concrete jungle that is Houston, mm -hmm. <laughs> I also like catching some fresh wind and uh, and being by the water. Yeah. You know, there's always a breeze coming through, and that just it feels good being by the water. And so it, for me, it's kind of like, <sighs> yeah. Well, that's why we get things to where we want them to be. We have a spot in Seabrook and a spot in the city. You there know you go, saying? best of both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> I about about four years ago, because like I said, we we're, we're both originally from that area. About four years ago. Like while we was in the heat of it, like grinding, H-Town happy hour, yada, yada. I realized, yeah, I got to make the shift to the city. I got to get into the city because mm -hmm. this is where it is. This yeah. is where it's happening. Like, cool, I'll go to Seabrook for vacation. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, so I, I made that shift about four years ago. I never looked back. Yeah, anytime I do like move out of the city or like I'm in the suburbs, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm a city girl. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta be like in the middle in the mix. <laughs> What's going on? Well, I was girl, born. I was born in Nassau Bay. I'm actually back in my hometown. I was born right in Nassau Bay. So I mean, it's oh, like, okay. yeah, my dad could have from St. John's Hospital. My dad could have thrown me in the Clear Lake. <laughs> yeah. like, he could have just thrown me in the water if he wanted to. Yeah. So it's so it is. It's back home. But I mean, you know, also. 
uh, but also I'm a real estate agent out there also. So that's why I sell. Oh, okay. That's why I sell down there too. There you go. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, no, no. So I'm out there in Seabrook, and you know, I, I I do real estate down there, and then this also. But I also coach football as well, and I'm going to be doing that again this season coming up. Staying busy. Yeah, for five and six year olds. So Fun. yeah. <laughs> what? So you were talking about you do photo shoots a, a little bit. Tell us about that. Yeah. So actually, I just started working with um, Texas Beauties for the 22. Uh, 2022 calendar coming out for next year so I supplied the bikinis um, nice. for that calendar and all the models better. yeah so keep a lookout for that it was um, the Texas history. Beauty calendar the Texas Beauty's calendar mm -hmm. and uh, shout out to Leo Lazaro Cindy Garcia 713 News yeah that's hey. what I was gonna say. That's 713 News huh? <laughs> yeah yeah that's cool definitely so yeah I'm really um, glad to have the opportunity to work out with all the talented models and photographers and everything yeah. like, everyone's so like sweet and like great to work with so um, they're actually doing a shoot right now. I was supposed to be there, but I was oh, like, no. I'm, 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 I'm gonna come by after. <laughs> yeah, shoot after. Yeah. Well, hey, as long as you're there when it ends, you didn't miss it. Yeah. You know what exactly. I mean? You can be a little bit late, but as long as you're there when it ends, you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. But I, I I like that a lot. Like I'm I'm package that a little bit. So it's kind of it's kind of cool. You get to collaborate and and work with other other brands of other different industries but y'all all working together to accomplish the same goals yeah you know what i'm saying like, like 713 is kind of like a media thing and then you have the photographers other entrepreneurs in houston mm -hmm. that's super dope that's yeah. a way also um we just did a shoot last week for swimsuit usa um for the wow. models casting and doing promo for that at, we did it at a lago mar so also thanks to lay holloway for that he you know uh invited me into that so That's the the lh way or something yeah, IG. yeah i follow him yeah so um yeah they did that shoot last week and so yeah i can be on the lookout for that my bikinis would be um on a lot on a lot of those amazing models that was so beautiful some suit yeah say yeah he's a badass photographer yeah yeah, his work's really good. I worked with him before, so yeah. I'm I see, glad he included me in that. I also see you you do some, you you do some of your own modeling your own for your own bikinis and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I <laughs> did in the beginning. Kind of a benefit of the product, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> no, so, you do good. You yeah, do. when we first launched, um, you know, I um, did like the promo video. I did like modeling. I modeled some of my own stuff, and I had some other models. Yeah. Um, so I've done some here and there, but I'm kind of at the point now where I like, I like the models to model and I kind of just like to be, be on the backside running it. Yeah. Just running the business and like, you know, it's a lot, you know, trying to keep in shape to be the model, <laughs> run the business package, everything, go to nursing school. Yeah. Like it's, it's like, it's a lot. How many more <laughs> the modeling is a job in itself You to just keep up. Yeah. Your appearance and working out and eating healthy, all that. It's a whole job in itself. You're a hustler in every sense of the way. Yeah, I was going to say, how many more checks do you want on the entrepreneur list? You know what I mean? <laughs> you just things you have to juggle. Man. Yeah. So okay. you, basically what it is is being a problem solver constantly. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Always working on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us what, what getting started and everything, what was some stuff that you kind of, some obstacles you faced, a little bit of struggle or, or some difficulty you had in, in getting the business started? Yeah, so, I mean, really just finding, like, the right vendors, quality vendors, um, you know, because a lot of stuff will look good, and you get the samples, and it's, like, the quality is just not great. So, yeah. you know, a lot of trial and error um, went into that. And, <clears throat> I mean, even, like, last year, um, you know, with the pandemic and everything, that definitely mm. was a huge, you know, like, a lot of businesses, like, had to shut their doors Those were and closed. Yeah, definitely. We Beaches had no summer. Were closed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There was no summer, so um, yeah, I had a lot of delayed shipments and things Did you like see a dip that. Just in sales too because of it. Oh yeah, definitely. So I pretty much just you know had to slash the last summer, mm. and um, I relaunched mm. for Black Friday for 2020. Um, pretty much with all the styles I have now. So yeah. were you running a special or anything like that for it? Oh yeah, definitely. I did. I did decent that weekend too. Um, yeah, there was a lot of sales. I think I did like 50 percent off or something for Black cool. Friday. I can't remember exactly what it was cool but yeah um but yeah so i'm still working on that and um it's starting to you know go back up since you know we outside again we outside. <laughs> summer is starting to warm up we were talking about that earlier it's starting to get hot again outside yeah gotcha. yeah my type of weather no, well did you also find out i know sometimes whenever you're trying to order things online from different re you know different vendors and stuff like that you could order like all right that's exactly what i want i'm gonna get a hundred of them Mm -hmm. And then they come in and it's like, man, this XL feels like a medium. Yeah. Did you experience any sort of those? Yes, a lot. You know, so like you'd order something and 
order like three different bikinis and they'll be all be say mediums and they all kind of fit different slightly different and so I ran into a lot of that um, so you always have to order like samples first and it's just it's a long process like selecting the right pieces um, just with quality and everything and things aren't gonna look the way they did <laughs> have you just for my own interest like do you do you end up getting a lot of the same designs from certain vendors or do you are you like using a whole bu bunch load of different vendors and stuff? Or? Um, yeah, for the most part, it's been just like different vendors. Yeah, um, yeah because I like to kind of keep it versatile. I don't want everything to look exactly the same. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I do have like a common like theme or vibe um, with the glam and everything, but I still like different, you know, yeah. pieces and all that, so. If there's one thing I can kind of compliment you on is, <laughs> Like I, I had met her a couple years back maybe, and I kind we kind of had lunch and, and talked about some different, um, talked about some different, uh, all kinds of different, like marketing strategies and and ways to utilize Facebook and different things like that. But something I realized was I, saw, I would see your bikinis online and see your swimsuits online, and then a year or so later I would see those same designs every girl on instagram wearing them like every girl on instagram yeah. would be wearing them yeah so um a lot of the pieces i picked you know they kind of like took off and became like popular like a year later um yeah. so yeah i had um i think the pink and green one with the i think i had cheetah print on it so that was like my first one to sell out that one went you know mm. kind of crazy so How it was good feel? I liked it, you know. Yeah. I had all the baddies. All the baddies. <laughs> in my, in my designs. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. So props to you, because I, I, I just it goes to show like you have a good eye. Like this, you're you're good at what you do. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Yeah, definitely. So what I'm working on next um, is kind of another problem I ran into um, with this swimwear and buying from vendors is that you know other boutiques can have like my same exact. Um, designs and some of them will have them priced super super low and some of them will ha will have them priced really high and um, so we basically I want to have my own design so mine are original and I don't have that problem with the competition and people charging different prices for the same exact bikinis <laughs> so. we having some technical difficulties we'll be right back Check the light on it. Flip the screen back. It's totally fine. It's a little too lit now, but Evan will block most of it. Yeah. <laughs> here, here we go. It's right, fine. Cool. Let's just dive back in. All right, for sure. All right, so you kind of you sorry started. about that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the show must go on though. Derek we did an excellent job with that. A little excitement. <laughs> yeah. So you started your business. Problem solving. You know, you know, <laughs> you're selling bikinis. COVID happens and everything. Um, you bounced back. Tell us a little bit where are you at now? Yeah, so as I was saying, I'm working on my own designs because another one of the problems I ran into was other boutiques selling my same exact designs and so on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, not my designs, but my same styles that I have that I didn't personally design. Um, and, you know, they have the exact same one. Some people are selling it for like an extremely low price, and then people are selling it for like an astronomical price. Yeah. Um, so, so, what's I ran some into of the price differences that. that you've seen? I've seen people selling them for like twenty dollars, and then I've seen people selling them for like over a hundred. Wow. And so it's just you kind of have to find that medium, I guess. So. So okay, so let me ask you this: in the uh, since, okay, so obviously some companies feel that they have the ability to charge that price. Yeah. So now you being Uptown Swim, uh, in your in your opinion, why do some? Is it because their branding is so good, or is it you know how come some people tax? so high on a product like that from a business owner? I mean, I'm thinking maybe um, with the bigger businesses, they're just, you know, they have that brand establishment. So people are like, people trust that brand. So gotcha. they're like, oh, this must be the real deal. And they might see something, see it for cheaper and be like, oh, well, this is kind of sketchy. So like, I don't know. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm guessing well, that's why. <laughs> well, no, like I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I just look at it to see like, you know, for somebody, for like for another individual who maybe wants to start their own swimsuit, company or something like that and find somewhere where like hey this this red bathing suit i can get it for you know x amount of dollars and then they go do the research on the back side and they're like oh well then there's companies selling this thing for 15 dollars and it really just messes up the whole it game. does and the people who are doing that aren't making like 
aren't making anything. Yeah, they're I don't know if they're just that. like not I don't know, business well, minded. Maybe they're just out to destroy the people who are trying to get it Yeah, going. but they're not going to get anything from it except for destroying it because they're not making any maybe, money. Maybe any that's profit. their goal. Yeah. Maybe that's their goal is just like the destruction of other people <laughs> who, are tr- who are trying to make it happen for themselves. <laughs> yeah. like, to kind of look at it from a practical note, maybe they're just trying to get their brand out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get people to talk about them. Then they're sacrificing their profits to do so. So, I mean, I guess it, it's like you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. You have to find that happy medium. Yeah. It's also, like you said, on Black Friday, you sold yours for half off. I'm sure your profits, you saw a big dip in your profits, but the amount of sales you had mm-hmm. easily Over made up for that. Yeah. And, and people talk, you know, every, every business is a referral business. Yeah. Like, so. Definitely. But yeah, so another way to combat that or... Um, kind of solve that is I'm working on my own designs now. So these are original pieces that I've designed from like the cuts, the styles, the fabrics, um, the patterns, like really cool patterns that you really haven't seen anywhere else. So yeah, just um, your own unique style ones. Yeah, just exactly like what I would envision. Like, you know, when I go out looking for a bikini, I'm like, okay, I want something that's like this, that fits like this. So kind of just, you know, trying to put that out there, what I would like, because I think, you know, other girls might, you know, like the same thing. So you know, these will be my pieces. Like, no one else is going to have that, so I'm not going to run into the problem of someone, like, just, you know, way overcharging or undercharging. Well, no, that's for- a, that's the beautiful part about entrepreneurship. And that's what I've... That's something that I've always wanted to... That's always something I've always banked on, is I want to be able to take my ideas and put them into reality and do something with it. Yeah. So, I mean, even if that is, like, a swimsuit designer or something, or one of these... Uh, you know, I have, I'll, I'll have, I'll go off on these like wild thought tangents, and you know, Derek so funnily calls them episodes, <laughs> and because and because like it's it. like I'll go into the, like this whole scenario of something that just was this is where the hell did that come from, Evan? And uh, and it's like, well, I want to get paid for that one day. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day somehow that imagination will do me That's well. What I always told you, bro, write them down, write them down, bro. I'm writing everything <laughs> down right now, <laughs> and I have been, <laughs> and, I, and I have been. No, I, no, no. But as far as writing stuff down, uh, I have notepads that I that I, that I have filled up, not just with, not just with ideas, with ideas, but also just my day to day. Because if I don't write it down, I can't get it out of my head. Yeah. If I get it in my head, I'm trying to juggle imaginary words and ideas, and I'm like, no. Laundry, then <laughs> eat food. You know what I mean? Yeah. It can be as simple as that, but I know writing stuff down makes it become a reality. Definitely. So that's why I got Fit all into the, the universe. I have all these nice notes and so and just in case, you know, we need to write something about it. So let me ask you this. Uh what's the process like of make creating your own design? Like kind of walk me through that process. Walk us through that process. Yeah, so I kinda of just had like an idea of what I want. Like, I just like really bright colors, you know, tropical things like that. So I started off with like looking for patterns, getting licensing rights for, you know, being able to reproduce What kind of licensing rights do you have to get? Um, Well, yeah, you have to buy the right to be able to, I guess, sell it on, you know what I'm saying? But you have to put your own spin on it? No, you can just buy it as is. And then um, if you want like exclusive rights, like there's like different. So like if you buy the exclusive right to the pattern, then like no one else can buy it. Yeah. And okay. so like nobody else will have that pattern unless they recreate like something similar. But basically, yeah. So, I mean, I just found like, um, you know, the patterns, the look I was going for. Yeah. Um, did some research, like the styles that I was looking for and things like that. And kind of just put my own twist on, you know, different things and. So yeah. from there, who do, who do you reach out to to get it? Uh, to manufacturers, yeah. yeah. You definitely have to have a good relationship with the manufacturer, somebody that you trust. Um, and that just comes from just, you know, working working with them over time, but just building rapport. So. Nice. Yeah. And build, building a good relationship with them. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And it's super beneficial for anyone else kind of looking into starting their own clothing line or business or anything. That's why I kind of wanted to yeah, touch into definitely. that. Yeah, definitely. Because in hopes with the with these podcasts, we have other entrepreneurs who are tuning in, listening ever so patiently for the answers to how do we start a business if we want to start. Yeah, with you know. me, it was just really just a lot of trial and error. Yeah. Um, like I've never really had anybody teach me how to start a business huh. or anything. Huh. Everything I've done 
with business, I've literally just learned online. Just yeah. <laughs> Google well, and, uh, and trial and error. Now. That's and, the power of online now. And within, and within that trial and error aspect of it, it's so it, there's an underlying message behind it. The trial, it's really get your ass up and go do it. Yeah, Just and not being it. afraid to fail or look stupid or dumb. Exactly. Like, that's, like, a big part of it because you're, like... Exactly. So, you know, because you might do something and it just doesn't pan out, right? <laughs> well, well, you know, even, for instance, like, I may make a post on my personal Facebook, like, hey, coming in hot, H-Town Happy Hour podcast, live at 6, may get 5 or 6 likes, but then the video itself gets, like, 10, 11,000 views. So, yeah, I'm like, so whatever. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Whatever. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, if you can, you, you, you can, you can hop, grab a surfboard and hop on the wave. Or uh, tsunami's coming. What you know? Your choice. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think that's something that a lot of entrepreneurs face is uh, <coughs> that feel fear of failure, and I think that's what, at the end of the day, kind of sets apart like the people that succeed and the people that don't succeed. Yeah, is, is it's like the, putting yourself out there. Exactly, yeah. not being scared to fail. Mm -hmm. This is a common theme in everybody we've interviewed so far. Is you have to be willing to fail. You have to be able to stack them L's in order to get to those W's. Yes, one hundred percent. All day. And within, there's, there's, there's two elements to success, all right? There's a, you know, as much as winning is a part of success, failure is a part of success. And I look at it like this. Even when I coach these little kids in football, these 11, 12-year-olds, which is what I was doing for the past couple of years, it's like winning and losing is both a part of the game. Look, you completed the game. Mm -hmm. You went through it. You did it. And you know what? You can't have a winner without someone losing. Right. You can't have a loser without someone winning. And if you do lose, you got to look for what the winners did and do that. And yeah. Learn, yeah. And, and do learn. that. Definitely. And, and look at what you did. Right. What, what could you have done better? And it's always, I, always about what everyone else did. Damn it, Derek. That was beautiful. You're so right. <laughs> <laughs> You're so right. It's really about self-reflection and knowing. Right. Right. Because, well, well, it's funny. Like, I mean, I think we all have that inherent... Uh, pull for like hey i know what i need to do yeah and then it's like well i'm gonna put my feet up on this couch instead and <laughs> <laughs> open a bag of cheetos and maybe scroll facebook for 20 30 minutes but we all know it's kind of you know i have to get up and go do something i know my time could be used better maybe instead of x y or z let me work on that design i was thinking about mm -hmm. let me reach out to another retailer or uh or wholesaler to see if i can maybe Get what I'm looking maybe they have what I'm looking for it's yeah. like you can you we just keep going bro we know that <laughs> no, no 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 I appreciate I appreciate it yeah, yeah and I lost my train of thought man good job why you messing with my mic Derek we're gonna leave you alone man <laughs> he's like um, I'm helping you <laughs> leave me alone <laughs> well to kind of dive in that to dive in that a little bit bro it's like and she's even kind of touched on it a little bit like it's it's easy to just stay on that couch but something that I've found kind of helps me is like uh, the concept like we all have the same amount of time in the day and like okay, we're working our nine to fives or we're going to school. Like we're, we've got all these different things. Like we could use that free time to relax and sit on the couch and go party, which is all fun and games and, and cool. It is allowed. Yes. It's allowed. But, but see, that's but a also, big thing. I'm really hard on myself. I will not let myself exactly have fun. What, yeah. I'm really bad well, about that. Well, that's <laughs> Whoa, yeah. Hey, this is yeah, happy, hour, happy, so hour, <laughs> happy hour, Happy hour, ma'am. Happy hour. Happy hour. Yeah, but I'm just so focused on, yeah. you know, what I need to do with school and, and, and my business yeah. that I, I, I really am like hard on myself. I'm like, well, you don't deserve to go <laughs> well, that's exactly, so you get you're right. that's literally going. the exact point I was trying to make is the more you fill that free time up with doing stuff that's going to benefit you, the, 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 the less you want to do, to just hang out. To yeah. waste time. Exactly. Like even. It brings it, no benefit. Exactly. And it makes you more productive. Like the more I the find. The momentum. Yes. Yes. And the more I find I fill my time with productive stuff, whether it's grinding H-Town happy hour, whether it's doing the marketing for other businesses I do, whether it's hitting the gym, like the more I fill my free time up with something that I know I'm going to benefit from, it's like the less I want to hop on call of duty well and right. also and that's and that's another aspect that you brought up uh even going to the gym yeah a lot of people are like uh bleh, i gotta yeah. go there it's gonna be two hours for me to see any results yeah. and it's like well you know if you just if you just put those stinking gym shorts on put on an athletic tank 
<laughs> and go hit the damn weights. You can probably get in and out of there if you're intense about it in about 45 mm -hmm. minutes. Right. If you're intense about your workout, I mean, sure, you could, I mean, you know, as much as I love jaw jacking with you, brother, you know what I'm saying? Uh, even in the gym, we have a great time, but also it's like, I like to get in and get intense with it. Because yeah. it's like, man, Progress. That, yeah. And yeah. so and so for me, it's like that's an effective use of my time in the gym. Definitely. Yeah. You know, even though we did shoot that Vanilla Gorilla video <laughs> in the gym. I, don't, yeah. <laughs> it, I need to see this video. <laughs> right. We'll show you after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, but but Vanilla it. Gorilla. I'm wondering don't what tell her about this it. could we'll possibly be. We'll show you afterwards. We'll show you afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, it won't be as good if he, if he explains it and then you watch right, it. Right, 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 right. It's, it's a hilarious video if you want to check it out. But um, even with that, bro, like, that just, like, with that. But that bro, was done on the fly and that was fun. That's what I'm saying. That even while you're being fun. productive, you can still still have fun like yes. fun doesn't have to be a dead waste of time like right. while I'm at work like, let anyone ask you at the office like I'm always having fun while mm -hmm. I'm working right. you know what I'm saying if we're at the gym bro we're having, we're having fun. fun we are it is It is. If, if we're doing marketing for H-Town Happy Hour and having a podcast right now we're having fun we're I'm yeah. happy and we're I'm happy up. in this hour I'm yes. happy right now uh, <laughs> you know so I mean I mean that's what it's about like and she even mentioned it earlier like you gotta love what you do. You gotta have fun with what mm -hmm. you're doing. So I mean, if you're not, you're gonna get burnt out quick. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to get burnt out. And then once you get burnt out, then it becomes like a chore, whatever you're doing. And that's the worst. Right. I feel like that's a dream killer. Is is not having fun what you're doing, and then you just kind of stop. Oh well, yeah. Doing it. Well, that reminds me of like of, of like the person. Let's say somebody works as like a they have a headset on and they're making cold calls all day. Yeah. And for some, for some, you know, sales company off the, off the, you know, off in the wayside, if you're sitting there for nine hours a day making phone calls and you're not a salesman by nature, like, and you get off the phone and you just say, Oh, I hate my job. I got to go back to that dump tomorrow. Like, I feel like that's, that is a waste. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to make many sales. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what can you do? Well, but, it, but as far as having fun, like you were talking about, whenever you're, whenever we are working out and stuff like that, I notice this with, with my dog, Tasha. Whenever I'm running with her and I'm doing sprints, like when, we might run and it'd be okay, but when I'm sprinting, she'll start like <laughs> biting at me and my legs as I'm running. Not, yeah. in a, not in like a... Any other way except for, hey, we're moving at high speed. Now let's play. Yeah. Now let's play. Yeah. We're moving at high speed. And I'm like, right. and then right then and there, it clicked. I was like, whenever we're moving high speed is whenever we can have fun. Yeah. But if we're, if we're, if we're not, if we're just having fun for no reason, mm -hmm. you know, so it, I, I totally understand. Fun that. for no reason is literally not fun to me. Right. <laughs> Damn, I'm like, girl. if I'm out and I don't have nothing like to celebrate that. and I'm just I'm drinking, write, I'm like, this is what... I don't know. I'm just like, yeah. I should be at home working on my it's business. Like, our our homie like, on the podcast last time, he said the exact same thing. He's like, drink to celebrate. Don't, exactly. Yeah. yeah. If celebrate. I don't have something to celebrate, it's like, I just, I'm, I'm so boring. I'll just sit there like, <laughs> okay. But when I have something to celebrate, <laughs> and, you know, things going good, I'm like, I'll be standing yeah. on the table or like whatever in this <laughs> section. <laughs> hey. That's like, cool. Tito's. Send another bottle of Tito's <laughs> this way. Yeah. Tito's, yes, that's yeah. what I drink. Uh, <laughs> I'll be drinking out the bottle. That. Shout out Tito's vodka. <laughs> yes. You know, we are uh, here at Tito's. H Happy Hour. Yeah, I maybe live by Tito's. Hey, I live on can, that. Hey Tito's, maybe we can work something out for uh, H Town Happy Hour <laughs> vodka. Holla yes. Anybody who knows me, I'm Tito's and soda with lemon all the way lemon? every day. Right. With lemon, lemon or lime, just a oh, little squeeze in there. Lime. Noted. Yeah, lime. either one. Something, just a little something. Just a little citrus to you know. So something we like to ask every person that comes on here is if you could, <laughs> what are the odds? This has like never yeah, happened before. This, and this has never it's happened. It's my energy. It's like tearing well, the room apart. Well, hey, well, hey. Somebody wants to shine on it. Yes. Well, no, hey, you know what? If this, is a, if this isn't a sign from the most high, it is hot outside. <laughs> and you need to get in the pool because this right here, we feel the heat. The heat is what's messing the, ta the tape up that has it dropped. Yeah. And, uh, it's not even that bad, is it, Joe? It's all right. It's fine. <laughs> um, You're good thing, no joke with that. So something we it's like to year. ask everyone, if you could go back, or for people that are just getting ready to start a business or they're just uh, embarking on their entrepreneur journey, or if you could go back and talk to your 18, 19-year-old self of when you were first getting started and stuff, what is what is some stuff you would, what are, what are a few golden nuggets you would tell yourself that to help you prepare for it mm -hmm. or make your time journey easier? 
definitely um, to just be more confident in yourself and your mm. ideas. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time, sharing your dreams that are, you know, could be bigger than the people around you, they can be very negative. And so a lot of a lot of the times when you just speak on that to small minded people, they can put negativity and just kind of tear down your dreams and make you second guess yourself. Whereas you weren't even thinking of those that negative wasn't even things on your before. Radar. Exactly. And now they put it into your mind. And I experienced that a lot. Um, you know, there was a lot of friends I had to outgrow that just, mm. you know, just always just small minded people. Well, yeah. well, it was some, the, one of the biggest things that gets under my skin whenever I come out with a, a, a grand idea or something like that, it's whenever, like, to the small-minded person like you're talking about, I go, oh, man, and then I have this idea, I want to do this and this, and they go, well, you're going to need insurance, and then you're going to have to start a business, and I'm like, you fool, that's the plan, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but, but like, because, like, cause like if, I come, if I come to someone with, with a good idea, and you're and, and they and, and the person will usually say, Well, you know, and it's fine, I understand people who want to play devil's advocate, but look, man, I'm trying to shine the light of God out here. I don't need the devil's advocate exactly. right now on this grand scale plan. And uh and then it's like if I come to you with an idea, please give me another good idea yeah. to help build on this. Right. Or, Instead of tearing it down and trying to stop it in its tracks. Don't like, kick yeah. my blocks down because yeah. I'm trying to build it. Exactly. So confidence and and dealing with your friends, even yeah. through negativity. And, and just anybody, just taking advice from people who don't have what you want. It, yeah, don't have what you want. You know, I've never ran a business, um, and people who are just negative in general. Um, yeah. It can just be, you know, they're just like, oh, you, just you know, you dream really big, and <coughs> it's just, I don't know. It's exhausting. Yeah, and I've I've always dreamed really big. Like ever since I was in high school, I just. You know, I'm like, stop. I want to do this. I want to go here and this and that. And then I've actually done all of those things see, now. And we'll see. And that's, you know, people want to talk about, you know, that's your imagination coming to fruition. That's actually making your imagination. You thing. sound crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, well, I might be. Or maybe you're crazy because you can't think as big as I'm thinking. Exactly. I have this whole grand plan planned out in my head. And then well, people love to say, well, it's not going to work. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's not. And you're like. Okay. Do you know? Do you know who the frick I am? Yeah. You know, do you know who the frick this is? You know what I mean? Well, so yeah. I kind of like to take that and I use it as fuel. I look at it almost yeah. like like a video game, even like bad bad reference for some people, but for me, like in a video game, if if you're if if you aren't if you're going in a direction and you aren't running in the enemies and bad guys and people checking you, you're going in the wrong direction. Yeah. I've heard that a million times <laughs> and I'll yeah. and I'll, and I'll <laughs> still appreciate it when I hear the two million times. Bro. It's one of my Dude. favorite analogies. No, like, it's so right. If if you're going down a path and people aren't like questioning you on it or challenging you on it or, chop at you. or trying to take chops at you, like then Very you're true. you're not doing something different. You're not yeah. paving your own way. Like everybody expects people to go down these certain paths and i mean like what's the quote uh i chose the path. two roads diverged in the yellow yeah. wood and so i could not travel both yeah be one traveler long i stood yeah and looked down as far as i could until it bent in the undergrowth and then it goes like it goes and then yeah i took the <laughs> road or the, i took the road least traveled Less right? traveled yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, uh, shout out miss said barry in eighth grade for making me memorize that <laughs> 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 if you're watching this, thank you. So it's happened. I ain't gonna lie, nobody's okay. gonna know the whole damn thing. <laughs> but I know, it's just like kept going. <laughs> the short version is like the two roads diverge, and I took the one least traveled. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Mm. But yeah, and then like we talked about earlier, it's just being afraid to fail. Yeah. Um, or not being don't afraid be to fail. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, I'm not trying to chop over Don't your be afraid yeah. to fail. Uh, but yeah, I mean, don't be as scared. To, don't be. Now I can't talk. Uh, scared. <laughs> don't be scared. <laughs> no, don't worry. You have to be Pacific <laughs> Ocean in here. You have to be Pacific with your words, okay? Yeah. yeah. So but confidence. Yeah. Don't be scared to fail. Yeah, just like don't be scared to you know invest money into something and it not you don't get it it's back. But that's the thing is like. I don't know. I'm just, I've never been afraid of that because I know, well, hey, if I do this, it fails. I learned from it and I can make it back and try it again. Like, yep. Or you could take what you learned, 
the the golden nuggets that you learned from that business and take it somewhere else. Maybe you want to do different kind of business. Maybe yeah. you want to do flip flops. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Maybe <laughs> maybe swimsuits is out. And you want to try and do a necklaces. You've done. Yeah. You've released some shoes before, right? Some. Oh man, on the money! Come on, <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur to the fullest sense. I see everything going on. That in was Houston. like ten years ago. <laughs> I'll just, I didn't know anybody remember that, but to, yeah, I, pay attention I did. To everything. This is a test. This was a long time everything. ago. Yeah, to and the I research did research and development that Derek does <laughs> for the consumers. No, 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 so I, yeah, that was one of my first like attempts at being an entrepreneur. I had no idea what I was doing, and it nice. was just an attempt that I tried, and I learned things from it. And here I am again, you know, um, with a more successful business because I'm, you know, I know what I'm doing. But yeah, that was just kind of me just trial and error, <laughs> taking well, a go out well, of it. Hey, that, you know, it's 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 part of that step to success because whenever we were first jumping with this, running around with these cameras in the Clear Lake area, I mean, they were like, it was cool, but like I remember just being like stoked after we had what two or three thousand followers. Yeah. And then whenever we stayed to it and stuck with the program, you know, now one hundred sixty thousand followers later, the people who the people who yeah the people who were like uh, you know. Ain't shot happy hour might be a silly idea, or the guys who are running it are goofy. It's like, <laughs> are we? Look at me now. Are we goofy? Well, we're goofy are we okay. yeah. Hey. Yeah. I pride myself on my goofiness. I may not be funny, but I'm goofy. <laughs> but I'm goofy. I'm goofy. It works. It like works. SpongeBob said it best. I'm a goofy goober. <laughs> my dad's been calling me silly since I was four years old, yeah. and it's Aww. still to this day. Yeah, he answers the phone, and says, "Hey, silly." And I'm like, I'm 29. Cut it out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> all right. So, things you would have told yourself. Um, kind of, where are you at now? Tell us about your business now. Um, yeah. So, like I was saying earlier, you know, I'm working with um, 713 News for the Texas Beauties Calendar. Yep. Um, Swimsuit USA. Um, I'm also working with uh, Chelsea Hagen for Limitless Chicks. Um, just, you know, supplying bikinis and stuff for her, yeah. for her brand. Um, yeah, and working on my new designs, um, everything like that. I'm, you know, kind of some investors like in the talk. So, you know, some new things, you know, may come about later. I don't want to give too much away on that, but, um, definitely. Let me, We're step here to get in there facts. For, let me step in there for a sec. That, that's pretty dope. Like if you think about it, you were just telling us about how, like you would tell your younger self, don't be scared to invest, like take those risks. And now here you are bringing up, you have people investing in you now. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because they, huge. you know, see what I'm doing and just kind of like, you know, trust me and like believe in it. Yeah. So it's good. The people it's, that really want to work with me and can like bring like real value and kind of like take it to the that next was level. My, that was going to be the next thing I mentioned. Like whenever you talk about your ideas with other people who are visionaries and who have good ideas also, mm -hmm. how much more pleasant is it for idea building whenever yeah. you can talk with someone who is like, and also, what if you did this to Yeah, it? like on that same same wavelength. Instead of yeah. being like, yeah. oh, you're going to have to have insurance for those rhinestones. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> those rhinestones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're going to have to have insurance. And you're going to have to have a business. And you're yeah. like, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I mean, you're just bouncing ideas off of each other and just kind of things that you would never even thought of before. That's what I love about talking to successful people, you know, who have, you know, successful businesses and I can learn something from learn them. Learn from their experiences. Yeah, because I mean, they have so much, you know, information and wisdom to yes. offer. Well, but yes. then again, okay, so I don't, I don't want to be harsh either. So, I mean, as much as we are hustle town and Houston and entrepreneur through and through, there are people out there who are not. And so right. you know, and so for and so for me to be like get out of here with your insurance ideas. No, we still do need, need the, those people. Yeah. Who also, yeah, but maybe it's business world might not be for you. Yeah. And that's okay too. Like yeah. we're not shunning you away or be saying you're a bad person because you can't think like this. But I'm just gonna go talk to somebody else who has better ideas. Yeah. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and talking with a lot of people, I've really like I've finally kind of like really realized that there's two different types of people i'm sure more than two but like they're an entrepreneur and somebody who doesn't have the mind of an entrepreneur it's just like they have like tunnel vision mm -hmm, and yeah. they just their their perception doesn't match yours yeah it's which... completely different there's they're just different kind of people and i realized that i am an entrepreneur because i have that mindset that these other people do not have yeah. and it's okay that they have that the whole world yeah. the whole world isn't made up of the, the same yeah, people and that's exactly yeah 
So you need every kind of person. To You're play. okay to be you, oh. whoever yeah. you are. You're allowed to be you. <laughs> those, yeah. those, those girls can buy your bikinis. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I was going to say that also. I was going to say, well, you know what? Some people are business owners. Some people are customers. Yeah. yeah. And there's nothing I mean, and their calling could be something completely different. Absolutely. Saving lives or Absolutely. like everybody has a calling. And I noticed too, you know, um, I don't know if you saw those memes where they're like, take your, uh, your stimulus money. Uh, invested into this and then I don't know it was just a long thing and they're like not everybody is an entrepreneur stop telling people to invest <laughs> their stimulus money and I'm Damn. like yeah that's true entrepreneurs can be very like you know just headstrong like you should do this or you need to do that but it's really like entrepreneurship isn't for everybody well and that's really just not. it because yeah. you were talking about perspective you're talking about perspective and a lot of the times so other people's perspective if it doesn't match mine as much as i want to be like hey think like me <laughs> and headbutt them and be like you need to know yeah you know, exactly. it's just kind of like it's one of those like all right maybe it's just, maybe it's just for me to do maybe yeah. I just, you know, maybe i need to harness these ideas and just let people be them instead of trying to make everyone think like a business owner yeah or maybe be, or maybe trying to stop everyone i don't have to force you to get your ideas going i can't want success for you more than you want it yeah it's basically what it comes down yeah. to if you don't want it, okay. But if you want to talk about it, I can too. Right. I mean, that goes along with your your friends as well. Like, it, it, when when you're when you're on the path of entrepreneurship, like you want to bring your friends with you. You want everyone to succeed with you. Yeah. And you can't. Not all of them have that mindset. You can't drag them around because they end up being heavy as fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like straight up. And I mean, that's something me and him faced in the beginning of Asian high brand stuff even too, not to go into much detail, but like we tried to bring everyone with us and we realized real quick, like you can't and that's okay. Well, I feel like it's also it's too many chefs in the kitchen can ruin a meal. Mm. True. True. Too many, if you know what I mean? Too and many chiefs in a tribe. <laughs> too many smoking chiefs out there going <laughs> Yeah. Too much peyote. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we're getting off topic here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, no, 100%. Well, because then what I also come to find out is everyone, well, as much as we want to have other people's ideas, sometimes other people's ideas um, will make them stubborn. Yeah. Because they'll have a perception that they want, well, I think I can do this better. I'm yeah. going to do off my own thing. And it's like, huh, okay, <laughs> but the real thing you ain't got do your thing you'll find out you know um, but everyone but everyone is they start to get stubborn and think that maybe their perspective is how it should be done and that's when we come to find out not everyone's on the same page mm -hmm. not everyone's on the same page not everybody's necessarily in the same book right huh. you can't sit, honestly uh you can't sit with us <laughs> Le legitimately <laughs> legitimately right now <laughs> yeah. so i don't know what mean it, girls oh, is that, is that what that, i think that's what it's from it is <laughs> right <laughs> and we're going shopping <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. you i didn't just that. reference three girls we did. <laughs> three girls. Two, two big guys with beards yeah. we're talking about you uh, can't sit with us <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, man, no, I've, I've yeah, I've, I've seen like little snippets of that shit. Wasn't it? It was a bunch of snobby girls in that movie. Is that basically what that was? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make an executive decision, and we're changing the subject from Mean Girls now. Um, <laughs> but I want to talk about it. Dude. No, right. Right. So, um, we're talking what? about the swimsuits, right? We're yeah. talking about the business. We're talking about the opportunity in the Houston. So if someone wants to, just to plug it again towards the end here, if someone wants to find or check out your swimsuits, what's the best best way to find them? Um, UptownSwim.com. Uh, that's my website and also Instagram, at UptownSwim, Facebook, um, up at UpSound. I can't speak today. Up at UptownSwim. Swim. Instagram, up Facebook, swim. at UptownSwim, and yeah. then UptownSwim.com. Cool, cool. What's, what, what, what kind of price ranges are you running, what, working with? Um, everything. I think my most expensive bikini right now is like sixty five dollars. So That's everything's like yeah. And then I have like beach bags, hats, shoes, if and everything like H, that. If they put in the H Town Happy Hour code, do they get a certain percentage off? <laughs> we can work on that. We can <laughs> work we, some we out. Work on that. Cool, cool. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. Put an H T H H. You know what I'm saying for a twenty percent off. If yeah. she's cool with it. So yeah, are definitely a lot of your say not not to go like. You don't, I'm not asking you to go into too much detail, but are a lot of your sales like Houston based because you're based out of Houston or have you noticed that you kind of sell in other places and 
Yeah, no, I actually do sell in other places, um, like all around the U.S., and I actually get sales from Australia, especially like Beautiful. during the winter, wow. because I think it's summer over there, so I've gotten multiple, like, on the other side of the world. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Well, the first time you sold one so from like Australia, how did that feel? It was pretty cool. It was actually like right when I first launched. And wow. I was like, oh my gosh, oh Australia. My <laughs> yeah, and then I've had I've had more than one from over there. So it's kind of cool because, you know, during the summer here, obviously it's summer here. And then during the winter, it's summer on the other side of the world. Yeah. Mm. So it's kind of always a market for it, especially with, you know, the online presence. That's the cool thing about it is I can market. Maybe and you could do like an Australian flag bathing suit. There we go. You and you're like See? very prideful about this nation. <laughs> Not your nation, but we were talking about the 4th of July red and blue uh, well, bikinis. Well, I just think it's a cool blend. The red and the blue. Maybe have a white little thing oh, in there. Because Australia is red and blue too, right? I don't See? know. <laughs> it all lies in the same thing. Is We've it? been I on didn't the same page. We've been on the same page. <laughs> yeah. cool. But yeah. I like that with my price range and everything, I think it's really cool because my bikinis, like they get, like I say, I call it glam, you know, glam on the beach because with the rhinestones and everything, it gives off that, you know, rich girl vibe. Hey. And it's just like, hey. yeah, I mean, if you're going on vacation, you know, and you can just, you know, grab a few things and just really give off that, you know, that vibe of glam. That yeah. uptown swim aroma. Yes, right? yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uptown. Cool. Uptown. Yeah. Definitely. So what is it, is, do your sales usually pick up around summertime? Is that usually? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, especially now, because like I said last year with the pandemic, everything was like, it was really down. You know, we couldn't go outside, we were sticking out. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't close back uh, outside pools in your own backyard, too. <laughs> I know? mean, they yeah. almost did. What they say? We have to wear a mask in our own front yard or something. <laughs> uh, well, the, the, the best, man, the best is, is the wonderful people who are protecting the world by driving in the car with their mask on. I just appreciate them at the most level. They are doing the... the well, because, I mean, it, it, it could protect themselves, too. And, yeah, no, but. Okay. <laughs> but definitely yeah so i mean just since we kind of started opening back up you know everything's picking back up and with all the projects i have going on right now and there's yeah. more to come so i'm really excited and i've just got to work with you know a lot of um really talented photographers and models and everything like that so yeah. grateful for the opportunities that have been um you know opening up for me lately yeah, absolutely definitely. well well you got anything else uh i have Many notes. I have a few. Uh -oh. I have a few more questions no, I want to ask. Too, yeah, so. no, 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 no. I mean, I pretty much. I we we kind of covered quite a bit. The difficulties from the vendors, from the uh, you know other boutiques doing okay. the exact same so thing. So, what's your favorite thing about being an entrepreneur? Um. I mean, working for myself, you know, I honestly never even thought I would go to college. Like I've always like, oh, you know, I'll never work for anybody. Um, but then, like I said, nursing kind of just, I don't know, it's a calling for me and I want to, you know, take keep, care of people, help people. Yeah, I definitely want to, you know, finish through with it. Um, but, you know, just working for myself and being able to do something that like I'm truly passionate about, you know, I'm, I'm boss. the boss. Be. Yeah, I like to, <laughs> not that I like to boss people around, but I just like, I have a vision and I want it to come to life. Yep. Well, there's nothing, well, yeah. well, there's nothing wrong with having that because I mean, it's like, you have to be, it, it's your idea, you know, yeah. and, if, and, and if you have an idea and it doesn't go that way, it's kind of like, no, it's particular yeah. in the fashion that I envisioned it and. Yeah. For Definitely. me, it's not even like being someone else's boss. It's just being a boss. Yes. Like that's the I've, oh, yeah, that's what. Boss. I, yeah. Well, I don't know if we can cuss on here, but boss bitch. <laughs> she a boss <laughs> bitch. <laughs> well, and, and and to start with, you know, to end with that, my my job was an entrepreneurship. I didn't like a manager telling me shit. Yeah, uh, I have a problem with people telling me what to do. <laughs> Clocking off at the restaurant, like, like yo, it. right now, let's do this. But you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I I don't like being told like that. And problems so, with authority. Same. It problems with authority. Now, oh my god, I've always said that about myself. I'm like, I have a huge issue with authority. Well, because well, because it's like this. It's 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 like if I didn't, man. This you just got to make well, sure. No, no, it's this thing right here. It keeps messing up. This thing is coming out. But the thing about it is, is like, man, I, I have no problem uh, taking a step back if I'm out of control. But if I, but if someone's telling me what to do and I'm like, I don't respect you as a person. <laughs> Why am I going to listen to that thing you have to say? Literally. You know? Yeah. yeah. And also, I feel like civil do disobedience is a little necessary. Just like a little, a little, I mean, what do you want me to follow all the rules? And if I don't, then I'm some sort of bad guy. No. No, yeah. I'm not. Right. Well, these rules are meant to be broken. And you put these rules here. Mm -hmm. And who are you? An elected official. Well, I don't. <laughs> I didn't elect you officially. <laughs> yes. But 
Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate having you on, Kayla. This has been amazing. Kayla! Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. On the show. A lot of fun. Absolutely. You know? Episode three down. Thank y'all all for down. tuning in to H Town Happy, Happy Hour, Hour, baby. <laughs> Number one podcast in the world. In the world. <laughs> We're live every Sunday, 6 p.m. on the dot. We'll never miss one. We'll bring Kayla back in a couple months. Y'all go follow her on IG. Hey, it's a it's a whole it's a whole way of either grab a surfboard or get washed away. Yep. Go follow her on IG at Uptown Swim, Facebook, check out her website, buy some bikinis. Uh somewhere in the comments say H Town Happy Hour and that's what's up. All right, Joe. Out.